Chip stocks among the biggest losers on Wall Street today, and it comes as the Semiconductor Industry Association announcing that global semiconductor sales hit 51, $51.3 billion, $51 billion during the month of July. That's an 18.7% increase year over year. And joining us now is Yahoo Finance's tech editor, Dan Howley. Dan. That's right, Josh. We're seeing this, this increase kind of as the world of PCs and smartphones kind of starts to return to some sense of normalcy after we saw the dips uh, following the explosive sales that uh, occurred during the pandemic at, at the very start where people went out, started buying new laptops, new smartphones. What else were you going to do when you were stuck inside? Uh, it's been you know four years since then. A lot of those devices are starting to age out. Smartphones, people hold on to them between you know three and four years now. Same thing with laptops, especially if you've got a lower end laptop or an entry level laptop they're not gonna be running that well four years on. And so we're seeing more people go ahead and purchase newer ones. And there's a, a few that are, are starting to come to mind. Intel is about to uh, roll out, or they just announced their, their latest chip. Qualcomm announced its, uh, their own laptop chip uh, that's going into Windows systems. AMD has uh, a new chip. There's this kind of sense of excitement around the AI PC, around AI mm. smartphones. What exactly that means, we don't really know yet. Uh, <laughs> and if people actually want them. But there's a sense of excitement from companies. Uh, and so that's really kind of what What's going on here with this with this kind of rise in in sales? And then obviously, you know, you can't talk about uh, chips without talking about AI and Nvidia, and so right. that's also another kind of boost where the the huge hyperscalers are buying boatloads of those kinds of chips and setting them up in data centers. So take a step back and give us more details on those new chips that you were just talking about. You know, the latest sort of the chip competition here, Intel, Qualcomm, yeah. with some of those new chips. So Intel came out with its new chip. It's it's the uh, Core Ultra. 200V, snappy name, I know, very <laughs> snappy, but they call it the second generation uh, core ultraline. And so uh, just to give you a little little uh, rewind, they had the uh, core I line of chips like forever and a day. Uh, last year they announced the core ultra series, that was supposed to be their big splash into AI PCs. Not really, uh, they didn't have enough of the firepower that they needed to be considered Microsoft Copilot Plus PCs, which mm -hmm. yet another naming fiasco. Uh, and now they have the second generation core ultra chips. And so they say that these offer the kind of battery life uh, and, and power that you would expect from a modern computer. Now, Apple's been doing this, these little guys right here, for years. They've been uh, installing their own chips in there, crushing it with battery life, crushing it with power. Intel just couldn't keep up. Uh, that was just because Apple ditched Intel and said, we're going to do this all on our own. We have our own designs. We'll get the chips. That's that. Uh, Qualcomm came in earlier this year and said, well, I mean, we're mobile too. Apple's doing this based on you know mobile chip designs. Why can't we do that? So they started doing that. Now they have their own chips with, you know, beating Intel as far as battery life and things along those lines. Uh, AMD has been doing the same kind of thing. And now Intel is finally saying, OK, got the message. We're going all in on battery life, all in on performance per watt. That means you should be able to run this all day long and get decent power out of it. Uh, they are uh, going to be AI PCs. They, there's this thing called TOPS. Uh, it's trillions of operations per second. It's basically a way for them to measure AI performance. It's kind of hit or miss, though. Uh, they take a couple of swipes at Qualcomm specifically and AMD specifically. They also really smack around Qualcomm for not being able to run certain apps just mm -hmm. because it's they're running classic versions of, of Windows with x86 processing. Mm -hmm. uh, Qualcomm isn't. So there's some games uh, that you can't run on a Qualcomm PC, and that's a big selling point for a lot of people. Right. Well, we'll see what ends up happening. Obviously, Intel needs some juice right now. Oh, man, yeah. they really do. <laughs> All right. Wow. Dan Howley, thanks. Appreciate it.